I was prepared to preach on scarcity. I will do so regardless. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Scarcity these days around the world. We hear about it because of different reasons. The war in Ukraine uh, blocks the shipment of grains to a big part of the world. Famine. There's drought all over the place. In some places, the floods ruin property and affect people. In our country, we have not been spared these. And although we are a prosperous nation, thank God, hardworking, faithful, because of the COVID, the war, and the drought, we at times feel like we are in danger and our resources are scarce. I remember when I started to work as an engineer 25 years ago, Presbyterian. Prosperity was the call. People were making so much money, investing in stocks and getting rich overnight. The middle class then was uh, joyfully, in, it was enjoying life. Scarcity here? No, sir. Scarcity, forgive me. Scarcity, thank you. No such thing. Nobody could comprehend that. But today, today it's a different story. For us, brothers and sisters, as people of Christ, Orthodox Christians, members of the church, scarcity has to be dealt with differently. There's a theology of scarcity that says, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. To do this, God helps us in two ways. Remember the people of Israel at the time of Moses. Moses is one of those two characters around Jesus Christ transfigured here on Mount Tabor, a feast that we still celebrate for a whole week. A feast that is given to us to experience, to climb the mountain with the disciples and to be in the presence of the uncreated light, precisely to deal with crisis situations. When the inflation goes faster than my income, when my health gives up, or my relationships break. Moses, right here, and Elijah on the other side, was the one who brought the people of Israel out of Egypt. Remember the miraculous crossing of the Red Sea? The parting of the sea with a, with a rod in the, in the sign of the cross, signifying the, the cross to come? What a miraculous thing, and the people of Israel rejoiced right after that, but a few weeks later, they were thinking, what? You took us out of Egypt? Yes, we were on the bondage there, but at least we're eating meat. We have plenty of meat. These Egyptians were eating meat, and we have plenty of that. And now look, you brought us in the desert, Moses and your God, and God. Scarcity. But these people running away from God, opposing, going against the flow, were tamed down by means of Moses' intercessions with God. And God said, okay, guys, you're in the infancy now. You're growing up. You're learning to become Christians, <laughs> if you wish. Uh, you are on that trajectory towards the incarnation of the Lord. For now, your complaint will be satisfied. Your scarcity now changes into a gift from God. In the morning and in the evening, you'll receive manna and meat. The quails will come. Do nothing. It will fall pie from the sky. Ah, what a great thing. And they received it. They got tired of this later and they complained later about it too. But the manna that came to them to feed them, this miracle that God performed for them to keep going on that hard path of growth towards the incarnation of God, had a particular property. God told them, you eat manna, you take as much as you need to eat. Don't keep any for yourself. You take as much as you need. Because if you keep any for yourself and accumulate and hoard, the worms will come in it. It will be stinking. It won't be good. So, this is what they did. 
They learn how to take only as much as needed. And the rest, leave it for the others. They only had what was necessary. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through whom God the Father worked this miracle of the manna for them day after day, except on the Sabbath, when he allowed to have two portions to keep one for the next day without worms and without stinking. It's the same Lord Jesus Christ was transfigured in front of our eyes and our hearts yesterday, whom he sought with great passion and zeal as people who need help or sick, who need food, spiritual food. In a world that is tormented by the fear of tomorrow, of accumulating, of buying and owning. This Lord, who is transfigured in glory before his transfiguration, taught his disciples, the people present there, and us, the theology of scarcity. Note here, these were not people who were abusively put to hunger, starvation, or drought because of the conditions of the world, the geopolitical status. These were people just like you and I who were seeking Jesus to be healed. We come to church as the hospital to be healed, don't we? Remember, it's not just to feel good. We might not feel good when we go home. We come here to be healed. And these people, knowing of the miracles that Jesus had done after John the Baptist was put to to sleep, to death, went after Jesus to be healed. How many? Lots of them. Thousands of them. Poor Jesus, he was hiding away, and these guys were coming after him. The divine knowledge took them here, the place that was dry. No grains, no water, no shade. Why? To separate the goat from the sheep, the ones who are truly dedicated, the ones who truly desire to be healed, the ones who knew who this was, the healer. And they put up with the sun, with no food, with the rocks, with climbing, with bring, bringing their sick. Can you imagine carrying a paralytic over the stones in the desert for half a day and wait in line, not to get a COVID test and get upset, wait in line to get to Jesus Christ. St. John Chrysostom says, well, the question, do you want to be healed? Do you have faith? Didn't come. Jesus didn't ask them anything. Why? There was no need to ask. Their faith was being proven in what they were doing. As much as our faith is proven in what we do, every time the Lord comes to heal, yesterday the transfiguration, today the resurrection, in just a week at the dormition of his mother, the Virgin Mary. These people showed that they were believers, they had faith, and they knew why they were there. Unshaken, solid. There was nothing in the way that could separate them from Jesus Christ for him to heal them. So, in this situation now, we see the wisdom of the world, if you wish, dealing with a crisis. Yes the war in Ukraine, the famine in, in Ethiopia, unemployment in the United States. Add to the list scarcity in the church of St. John the Baptist in Carmel. When the divine liturgy started, the Lord looked around and said, wow, sharp scarcity here. Is it because of the drought? Is it because of the war? What was going on? Scarcity in terms of what this community has. Continuing to rent, what a blessing this is. But deserving a house of her own. So the wisdom of the world, as we apply it at work and everything else, comes to the disciples. And they go to the Lord and says, Teacher, the evening is coming. We have thousands of people here. 
you better send them away before we get into the disaster. They're going to have we're going to stampedes and you're going to get hungry and grumpy and cut one another and steal. God knows what. Send them away to the villages. They will get food. They will calm down and the Romans will leave us alone. This is what they were thinking. And the Lord tells them, it's a turning point of the theology of scarcity, scarcity. The Lord says, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. You know, they might have regretted that they went to the teacher to ask him. Now they, they were given a commandment. They were given a commandment. You give them something to eat. So what? We've been with you for so many days, we don't have anything with us. These people have been living here, hearing your word. It is your preaching of the, of the kingdom that, that feeds them, nourishes them. Seeing the healing, the miracles. How can we possibly feed them? We don't have much. But the commandment came upon their heads, you give them something to eat. I'd like you to look around here. Look around. Turn your heads and see who's around you. These people are starving. We are starving. The commandment today is for us. You and you and you. Give them something to eat. Not just the 25, 30 people here. The large masses. Which ones? The ones who starve everywhere? No. The ones who are here in the desert who are willing to starve and have no water, to those you give them something to eat. Those who are at the, at the whatever, their home comfort, or well, God knows what they do this morning, leave them alone. They have the earthly food. But you give something to eat to those who are sick, who have come here to be healed. This commandment, as harsh as it sounds, is not left up in the air. The one who is all merciful, healing so many out of love for his most precious part of the creation, that's us, did not abandon the disciples and the people who were there seeking healing. He answered to them, they answered to him, how can we possibly Give them something to eat. We know exactly what we have. Five loaves and two fish. It's impossible. The lad who has them brought them for him so he will not die in the desert. Just for him. And these loaves are barley loaves. They are not the good ones. This man, this, man, this boy is, is a poor man. And the theology of sparsity is stated. Bring them here to me. Bring them here to me. If you don't have enough in the world, you think about this. Disperse. This is the solution. We have a great solution. Send them home. Let them figure it out. We thought about it. But the Lord says, no, your logic is faulty. You are not here in his house to apply your logic. You are here to bring them to me. Wow. Five loaves and the two fish were blessed by the one who looked at the Father, himself being of the same nature with the Father, being divine, who gave thanks, who broke it, divided, and did not end. This is exactly what we will do in the divine liturgy. Prefiguring this great mystery of the endless sacrifice that he will bring for us at his last supper crucifixion and resurrection the apostles can you imagine these people giving food taking bread and fish distributing it to the masses to the thousands of people women and children not ending more from the hands of the one who gave life to that wheat plant but what a miracle is this? How about the miracle of a wheat kernel put in the ground that produces 10, 20, 30, 50 seeds? Isn't it the same one? Maybe even bigger. So they fed everybody. Can you imagine those who received it? 
with humility, with discipline, how they reacted to this? And can you imagine the one who gave away his food? But at the end of the day, it must have taken some time. Unlike the Jews with Moses in the desert with the manna, they had 12 baskets full of the crumbs. More than what they started with. Wow. The theology of scarcity teaches us that for us, the Christians, the followers of Christ, the faithful, the ones with hope and love, being a follower of Christ is not about what we have, how much we have. It doesn't matter. What matters is what we do with it. The difference that makes is made here is by bring them to me. Bring them to me. Bring them to me what? Bring them to me their time, their talent, their treasure. As an expression of what? Of a love for God who's healing. Of a love of God who sacrificed himself. How much? Everything he had. His life, his son, on the cross. So for us today, this parish, so scarce in attendance, desiring those few who desire to be healed, do not be discouraged. The Lord worked the miracle with just five loaves and two fish. The, work would work, the Lord will work the miracle with you and I. If it's just the two of us. When? When we bring what we have to Him. And not think that I don't have enough. And not think that tomorrow the stock will go down. And not think that tomorrow, whatever, next week I might lose my job. Yes, they will come. They will come. But as long as we have God with us, we should not apply the logic of the world, but use Him. Use God to multiply the little that we have. It is not about quantity. It is about bringing it to God. Catechumens, I'm so impressed with you. I don't know how to answer to you when you come to church here, all of you on time at the Divine Liturgy, desiring to find this Lord God whose church has been with us now for 2,000 years. And you walk in an empty church. I don't know what to tell you other than, look here. Seek this. Try to be transformed, transfigured. Have the light of Christ in you. To take away all fear all concerns and the logic of the world and build the heart just like in the book that you had to read for today. The heart that makes the difference. When love is in the heart, everything changes. So it is today, brothers and sisters, we take courage. These two things that Christ is teaching us through His Word, through His deeds, not many words today. First of all, always there when he's transfigured, at his feet, such that when scarcity comes, when the cross comes, when illness comes, when age comes, we don't get discouraged and run away. We know why this is done and where we go to be just like him in the kingdom, Jesus Christ, man and God, radiating and glorified. Number one. Number two, we remember that the logic of the world is insufficient for us. If we want to take advantage of Christ and His blessings, His glory manifest in our midst, we have to bring to Him everything. In the Divine Liturgy, the offering is made in all and for all. Peace, love, the five loaves and the two fish. The condition of the heart. Not like the Jews, you keep it aside, you have worms and stinks, stunks, stank, stinking. Not like that. 
the condition of the heart that is generous, that provides everything who we are. That joins in the divine liturgy the sacrifice of the Lamb, unblemished Lamb, the great mystery, sacrament, in Him and through Him we offer these. You see, the sacrifice happens no matter what. If we do not offer along with it, what would we receive in exchange? Today's mystery, um, miracle rather, teaches us how to approach this in the divine liturgy, how to prepare, how to bring from the heart, and that scarcity becomes irrelevant. May the Lord bless us, bless us, to be there when He offers healing and to come with a pure heart, offering the five loaves and the two fish that He has entrusted to us to be good stewards of them for the benefit of all those present there. Amen.